Hello and welcome to this short clip which is designed to take you through the homework I set on constructing Hess law cycles. Now hopefully the sheet itself that you can see on the screen um, is fairly self-explanatory but I thought what I might do is a short clip to take you through these just to clarify um, what we were talking about. So let's start with the one at the top. So it gives you the enthalpy values for a set of reactions apart from one of them, reaction one. That's the one you have to calculate. So this now represents the enthalpy change that you're trying to calculate. The next step is to look at the types of enthalpy changes that you're given. Now the next thing you've got to do is decide what kind of enthalpy data you actually have. So you might be given it as a table, or you might be given it as a series of equations. This clip focuses on how to do it if you're given a series of equations, but the technique is, is no different really to if you're given it in, in a table. So if you're given delta FH data in a table, or the equations that you have represent the formation of something from its constituent elements, then you can use this type of um, Hess diagram. Reactants go into products across the top, like we've just said, that's your delta RH. The elements listed in their standard states and the correct mole ratios to make either the reactants or the products, and therefore you can put in the delta FH data. And from that you can follow an indirect route. If, on the other hand, your equations represent combustions, and uh, there might be one or two that don't have the, um, the constituent elements turning into your product, then what you've got to do is consider that you might have combustion data instead. So what you do here is you write reactants going to products across the top, just like I've stated already, but the reactants and the products point downwards, and you put the combustion products, e.g. the oxides like CO2 or H2O, for example, in their standard states and the correct mole ratios. And the blue arrow, as always, is your indirect route. So what I'll do is go back to the example at the top and see if we can work out the Hess cycle that's provided, how that actually fits into this, uh, this advice we've just talked about. So classifying these, um, reaction 2 and 3 could be either formations or combustions. So which do we choose? Well, the thing is that all of the equations that make up the indirect route have to be the same type of reaction for a Hess cycle to work. If you look at reaction 4, where I put the arrow, you can see that it's actually a combustion, it's not a formation. So because reaction 4 can only be treated as a combustion, that means you've got to treat all of them as combustions. So the Hess cycle has got to look something like this. And as you can see, that's exactly what's been put in place there. So to do the actual calculation, what you've got to do is add up all the enthalpies as you go from reactants to products, and you go via an indirect route, which I've now labelled on my main diagram. So if you were to follow that blue arrow, you can see that on the left-hand side, um, you're going with the direction of the enthalpy change. So you keep the sign the way it is. But on the other side, as you go towards the product, you're going against the direction of the arrow, so that is the opposite sign. So my final value can be obtained by adding all the enthalpies on the left-hand side, on the reactant side, up, keeping the sign the same because my indirect route goes in the same direction as all of my, um, uh, my enthalpies. But then on the product side, the indirect route now goes against the sign, against the, uh, the direction of the arrow, so now I continue adding it up, but the sign is reversed. So if you put that into your calculator, that'll give you minus 75 kilojoules per mole, just like it says on the sheet. Okay, so now let's have a look at another one. I'm not going to do all of them, because the answers are at the bottom of the screen, and I've shown you the technique now. But I'm going to find one that requires you to use the other Hess cycle, and that's the one that uh, is uh, dependent on delta FH data. 
So if you look closely at the reaction you're supposed to work out, it's uh, SO2 plus 2H2S giving you 3S plus 2H2O. So that's neither a combustion nor a formation, but we're not interested in what that is. We're interested in what the indirect route would give us. And every single one of the indirect route con um, components, reaction 2, 3, and 4, are the formation of something from their constituent elements. They're more than just that. They're the formation of one mole of substance from the constituent elements, all reactants and products being in their standard states. So we've drawn out the reactants and the products on the left and right hand sides. Now we can put the constituent elements in. So we've got them in their correct mole ratio and we've got them in their standard state. So we're still obeying the rules surrounding the definition of the standard enthalpy of formation. So I'm just going to draw a little box around them because I want to just emphasize that all of them are going to be involved in either producing the products or producing the reactants. So starting off with my sulfur dioxide, the formation of one mole of that is minus 297 kilojoules per mole. But because my indirect route takes me against the direction of that formation, splitting my left-hand formations into the two separate reactions. You can see clearly that sulphur turns into sulphur dioxide, but it goes up, it points up. And pointing up is my minus 297 that my data has. Uh, so I've got to change that into plus 297 because my blue arrow, my indirect route, is going against the direction of that black arrow. I'm doing exactly the same thing for the formation of my two H2Ss. If you look at the uh, data for reaction number three, it says it's minus 20.2 kilojoules per mole, and I'm actually changing it into plus 20.2. I'm doubling that because there's two of them I'm making. So you can see that the balancing number for H2S is two, so I have two times plus 20.2. So I'm ignoring the 3S completely because it's an uncombined element and uncombined elements have an, a formation enthalpy of zero, no matter what. And I'm focusing on the formation of two moles of water. This time, my blue arrow, my indirect route, is going in the same direction as the enthalpy change. So I keep the minus in the minus 286, but I double it because there's two moles of water being made. So you can see from the bottom of the screen on the left that the final answer should be minus 235 kilojoules per mole to the minus 1. I'm just going to pop all that into my calculator and hopefully it ends up as that. So as you can see uh, my calculator told me minus 234.6 um, the answer um, is obviously to three significant figures so it's minus Two, three, five. Okay, so hopefully this uh, gives you a few ideas about how to how to construct these types of cycles. Uh, it does require practice. It does take a while to become sort of fluent and instinctive on this, but it is worth putting the practice in, particularly if the exam question that you might be faced with in a paper actually asks you to do a Hess cycle. I personally prefer Hess cycles as opposed to the the word of calculation version, which I haven't really talked about in this clip, uh, because I think the Hess cycle, it, it, it makes you think about what you're writing down, and it takes it, it takes it from first principles. And I always think that first principles are the best way forward, because nothing's missed out then, and you're guaranteed to get it right. Okay then, thanks for listening. Hopefully it's been useful, and until next time, I'll see you soon.